Imagine a life that every day, in order to get by, you have to take your pills. You have to take your prescription medication. Or every day, right, for whatever chronic illnesses that you might have, whether it's high cholesterol, high blood pressure, or any of the chronic illnesses, heart disease, or even cancer, that you have to be scheduled for your, the next doctor's appointment and the next thing that's got to do in order for you to be able to manage the disease that you're trying to work with, right, just to get by. Imagine the inability of being able to spend time with your friends whenever you want to do that or with your family members whenever you want to do that or to even travel because you don't have the stamina to travel or you don't think that you're capable of doing it. Or maybe you can't even get underground and just play with your grandkids because, you know, you don't feel good enough to do that. Do you guys have this picture there in your mind and you're like, hey, you know, how does that sound like? Versus turning that around, right? Living into your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90 years old, right? And having the ability to do whatever you want, whenever you want it. That you can get on the ground with your kids and your grandkids and you can still beat them up, right? Think about that for a minute. That you don't have to wait for your next doctor's appointment that you don't have to be in the wheelchair the remaining 10, 15 years of your life, that you can spend time with your spouse, that you can spend time with your kids, with your grandkids, whenever you choose to do that, you get up in the morning and you feel great. If you had to pick between those two, which one would you choose? Right? A or B. That's pretty, like, that's pretty self-explanatory. So what I want to do with you guys tonight is over the next you know, 45, 50 minutes or so, Right? I want you to discover the most powerful, the most natural, the most effective way to be healthy and to stay healthy while minimizing the deadly effect of chronic illnesses. Because as you know, or maybe you don't know, or maybe you have a little bit of an idea, if I were to ask any one of you here tonight, do you think that we live in a healthy country, what would you say to that? Right? The answer is like, even if you don't know anything about health, right, usually people are like, heck no! Right? And then when it's all said and done, is to give you the opportunity to just take action because, right, how many of you here at some point in time, you read a great book, you intended to do something with the book, but yet it's still in the night table? Am I the only one? Right? Many, if not all of us. So not only that you get the information, but you also take action because information without action is not going to take you anywhere, unfortunately. Does that make sense? I'm a little bit passionate about, you know, the topic tonight for a lot of different reasons, but many of you here, you know my story, but I just want to tell you a little bit of a glimpse of it, is this thing called food. I have a little bit of an interest because I grew up on a farm. Both of my parents were farmers. Um, I haven't been home now in a few years, but if I was to go back home, my, my cousins and my extended family, they still have farmland. We're talking about thousands of acres, Right? So this is like close to me. That's something that from the time I was five years old, right? I was out there just about every day for 10, 12 hours. In the spring, I would not go to school. I'd just work because it was time for planting. In the fall, it was time for the harvest. I would still skip school, right? Because this is just how we were doing things. So as I'm showing you here this tonight, I, wanna, I want you guys to, some of you have seen this diagram before, but I just want to, this place here was created back in 2004, and the, the vision behind Gilead was to, that was for healing of the entire body. So tonight we're going to be touching on a little part, which is a big part, but yet it's a little part in the midst of all of it, which at the top you're looking at, you know, the spirit you have, like if you were to look at the definition of health right now, according to the World Health Organization, it says that health is the optimal functioning of your body, and then it goes on to say physically, mentally, spiritually, and socially, and not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. Should I say that again? Right? It says that if you truly want to be healthy, your body's got to be function. What is, uh, your body needs to be able to function 100% of the time, right? Physically, mentally, socially, and not merely the absence of disease, of disease and infirmity. So what that means is in all those three circles behind me right now, 
that you should be working your program of being healthy. Now tonight we're going to be looking at the bottom circle, which it says the body, and then within the body there's, there's a lot of different things, and there we're going to talk about this one thing, which is, you know, this thing called food or non-food, right, that people are putting in their, in their body. Does that make sense? You follow me so far? Yes or yes? The answer was yes. Okay, very good. So the first thing is, what's the problem with food or that, that I put down slash health, right? It's first, if you like, if I ask any one of you here tonight, say, hey, you know what? How many of you here would like to be healthier than you are now? How many of you? By a show of hands. I mean, don't lie to me. All of you here want to be healthy, right? I mean, unless your shoulder hurts, you should be raising your hand saying, well, of course I want more. I don't think you'd be here tonight if you didn't want more. So everybody wants to be healthier, but yet if you don't know what that means to be healthy, right, you're never going to be able to get there. It's like, you know, I mean, you don't have a map. You don't know where you're going. You want something, but you don't know how to get there. So today in the United States of America, that's pretty like evident that we're not doing such a great job. All of you already told me, even if you like health is not your expertise, you already know that we don't, we're not doing so good. So some of the questions that we're going to be asking is number one is well, how do we define health, which I've already told you. Your body has to be able to function 100%, right? And then it goes on to say physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually, and not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. What that means is you having symptoms or no symptoms doesn't mean a person is healthy. Does that make sense? Yes? Can you say yes? Yes. Okay. Online, they're saying yes. They're giving me the thumbs up, right? Then it says on this next one, it says, where does our food comes from? So this is important. Now, all of you here tonight, maybe you'll leave this place and you'll be like, yeah, but Dr. jean -Guy, you know I me, mean? I don't have like all of your background and all of your education and I don't know what you know. And guess what? You really don't. You don't need to know what I know. You just need to have this thing called common sense. Are you ready? And I think that all of you here, if you choose to, you have that. So I want to break this down. Now we know what health is. Then you want to find out that where this food comes from is for the most part, right? It either comes from the ground or from the trees or... You know, it's moving, and you shoot it, and you eat it, right? Those are the questions. You're like, well, where this food comes from? Now, the problem with people today is most of the time, by the time it's in your plate in front of you, you never, you never ask the question, where did that stuff come from, right? Maybe for most of you here tonight, or some of you that are not here, or you're watching online, you might be thinking to yourself, you're like, hey, as long as it tastes good, right? That's all I care about. And I always tell people, I'm like, listen, you don't eat for taste, you eat for fuel. I know for some of you that's not very attractive, right? You're like, really? I mean, I should be able to enjoy it. I'm like, well, once you start eating real food, you know, at some point in time you will enjoy it. But initially, that might not be that enjoyable. Then it says, what's the problem with those things above? So let's start here with the ground, right? I mean, I told you that I grew up on a farm. So if we go back, and back in 1970s, right, in the early 70s, we had about 150 acres of farmland, and whenever we had to uh, take care of weeds, we would just bring people in on the farm, and we would pull them. So then for days, right? I mean, this was like, this was my job. I mean, I had like a crew of like sometimes 15, 20 people, and we would just be pulling the weeds. Did we spray the crop? No, we didn't do that for the most part. I mean, it was rare. But guess what? If you were to go back home today, which, you know, last time I was home was about two and a half years ago. My cousins, they have farmlands of about, you know, many of them, a thousand plus acres. So they don't hire people to pull the weeds anymore. What they do is they use chemicals that are so strong that if you have one drop on your finger, you're going to lose your finger. But yet they put that on the food every day. And then you're like, by the time it's time for harvest, then, you know, you eat that every day. But people never... Think of it this way, right? They're like, hey, you know what? If it was bad, it wouldn't be in front of us. Now, Dr. Lee, which was the founder of Standard Process back in 1929, he said that, hey, you know what? Nutrition starts with the soil, and then he went on to say water, and then sunshine. The soil. So when they do studies in food science today, they go 50 years ago, and they look at the organic apple, and then they look at the nutrient in the organic apple. And now 50 years now, back in the 2020s, right, the same organic apple was about only 50% of the nutrient in it. The same organic apple, it's the same. But there's only 50% of the nutrient in it. 
So if I was to say to you, even if you know nothing, and I say to you, hey, you know what? Do you think that our soil is depleted in 2022? What would you say to that? For most of you, even if you don't know anything about nutrition, you'd be like, you know, probably the answer is yes to that. Because we're using a lot of pesticides and hormones and antibiotic and herbicides. I have a, a, a brother-in-law that lives in Laporte, Indiana. And he said to me, and this was shocking to me, he said to me a year and a half ago, he says, listen, we don't use glycosate anymore to spray the wheat and corn and soy because it doesn't work. In the state of Indiana, we use Agent Orange. And he says, the farmer did not want to do that. So Monsanto says, hey, we're going we're gonna to come and do it for you. We're going to teach the farmer how to do that safely. So they charge them a certain amount per acre to come in and to spray the crop with Agent Orange, right? Then I'll give you an example. When it's really dry out and you don't have a water system, do you know how they make sure that the wheat is not going to die? They spray it with high fructose corn syrup. But if you don't know that and understand how they take care of our, of our crops today, then you're not going to be able to understand, you know, by the time it gets into in front of you, right? Understanding between food and non-food. That's my number one goal tonight. I want you to understand that. You see here when something grows off the trees, what do they do now? Right? If you were to have an apple tree, how do they make sure that there's not, you don't have all those bugs getting into the, those apples? They spray the crap out of it. Okay? I can promise you that. And then last but not least is you have animals. I was telling Dr. Cody just last week, I said, hey, listen, I usually don't tell people to read books because when I've had people read books, I've done that in the past. People read the book and they're like, oh, now I know how Dr. Jean you think. And really they don't. But I'll give you an example. Don't go read the book. You don't have to, but you could. Right? It's called The Diet for New America by John Robbins. John Robbins was the, the son of Baskin Robbins, the ice cream guy. And when he wrote that book, if you were to read the book, by the time you're done, you would, you would want to become a vegetarian. For sure. Because you need to understand when people write books, they just have a motive. What that means is he was trying to portray that the animals in this country, they're not treated properly. And I agree with him. I don't think that all of you should be vegetarian, though. But I agree with him. Because if you were just going on a farm where you see the animals, how they're being treated, right? Number one is if you have a, you know, a cattle farm that is producing milk, how do you think those cattle are producing milk? They can't be sick, and if, they're, if they do get sick, then they get antibiotic. And if they don't get sick, that's okay. We still give you antibiotic because we want you to produce more and faster. Right? And then those cows, what do they eat? They eat corn, soy. That's what they eat every day. So if you want to be inflamed, this is a great way for you to eat that stuff. Because then the animal is eating corn, soy, Right, And then you go and have that meat, and then guess what's going to be in that meat? What kind of fat do you think you're going to have? It's called being pro-inflammatory, meaning that you're just like your body's on fire. And when your body's on fire, then you have chronic illnesses that's going to start developing, like heart disease, like people having stroke and having heart attacks, right? The people having cancer, people having diabetes. Do you know that there's millions and millions and millions of people, they are diabetic, they don't even know they are. And if they, many of them, they know, they just want to ignore it, right? So I want you guys to understand that if you don't ask the right question, you won't get the answer. I'm going to go over the book tonight. It's called the Bible. It's called the Scripture. And I'll tell you what's in there. You'll be able to see it with your own eyes. But you have to understand the basic first. The basic is we want to have common sense. Right on this next one here, this is fascinating. It says, U.S. rank. Right? 34 in life expectancy at birth. This is the United States right here. Right? Number 34. So we're the country who's like, we're wealthy. We have like smart people. We have great nurses. We have great doctors. We have great hospital. We have great technology. We have great science. But yet our health suck. How's that sound? Look at this next one. It gets better. It says the U.S. per capita health care spending is almost twice as the average of other wealthy countries. So that means in the United States, we spend 11000 plus per year, right, to take care of, you know, for the health care per person, but yet we're worse in accordance to the World Health Organization. We're 37 out of 40 industrialized countries. So we spend the most money for our health care system, but yet we're the sickest. How does that sound? How, does that, how do you like it? 
right? It just makes no sense. But people never question that. They're like, yeah, but my doctor said. And don't get me wrong, Dr. Jean Guy is not opposed to the doctor. I'm just telling you, I want you to understand that if your house was on fire, would you be calling the fire department or you'd be calling the carpenter? Right? You'd be calling the fire department. And you make sure they come in with their big axes and hoses and they can put that fire down. Yes or yes? But once the fire is down and there's no more fire, the following morning, what would you do? Would you be calling the fire department again or you'd call the carpenter? So tonight I'm going to be talking to you about health, right? And what that means, like for a person, if you, all of you said, hey, I want to be healthier, if I say to you tonight, do you think you're healthier when you take more drugs or less drugs? What do you think? For some reason, I've never had anybody arguing with me say, oh, I'm really healthier when I take more drugs. People don't say that. They already know it. And it's always amazing to me when I talk to patients in the office, say, hey, you know what? When you get healthier, you might not need to take as much blood pressure medication. And they look at me, they're like, well, is that going to be dangerous? I mean, how can this be dangerous if you become healthier and you need to take less drug? If you become healthier, you might not be taking as much of your blood sugar medication. Would that be a bad thing to any one of you if you're a diabetic? But people look at me and they're like, well, Dr. jean Guy, you know what I mean? Is that healthy? So I want you to be thinking in terms like, hey, how can I gain some health? This is important. How can you gain some health? Look at this one here. It gets better. It says, although the United States spend more on health care and the other developed countries in its health care outcome, it generally not any better. So here's the worst. Here's the best. So this is the health status and life expectancy. Here's the U.S., right? We're towards the worst. Can you guys see that? Infant mortality, we're towards pretty much the worst. Quality of primary care, we're just a little bit less in the middle. Here it says unmanaged diabetes, quality of acute care, and then it says heart attack mortality. We're, we're doing good at that. Heart attack mortality. And what I want to say to you tonight is like, who cares? Even if we're good at heart attack mortality, maybe the person doesn't die. This is like, you know, that, that still means those people are sick. Does that make sense? Even if we save those people, you know, in the first place, we need people to be healthier. There's nothing wrong with saving a person from a heart attack, but then the next step is the question is, how can we get you healthier so you don't have to worry about having a heart attack? Does that make sense? Right? That would be the goal. Gary Knoll wrote a book, and maybe some of you have read the book, but in his book he says, Gary Knoll is a PhD and a top three medical doctor in the country. When he wrote his book a few years back, he says, hey, listen, there's one million people dying every year because of the current medical system we live in and the reaction to drugs that people take. Think about that for a minute. One million people every year. There's 700,000 people dying from cancer every single year. There's 562,000 people that die from heart disease every single year, and they were all taking their pills. Think about that for a minute. That's a lot of people dying. Would you agree? This is called healthcare system. How's that sound? Can we agree that if we're into health, then we have to make different decisions? Would you agree with that? Right? And that's really what I want to talk to you about tonight because we haven't started yet. Sometimes people don't realize how bad that is. Here it says, what fits in your busy schedule, better exercise in one hour a day or being dead 24 hours a day? Ha ha. Right? So when people are like, oh, I don't have time for that. I'm like, listen, you don't have time not to do it. How expensive is it when you have to go have kidney dialysis three times a week for four hours at a time? How expensive is that? How expensive is it to have like, you know, cancer treatment for 21 days in a row? And then you don't know if you're going to make it through. How expensive is that? How expensive it is to have like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, having diabetes, taking your pill from this point on for the rest of your life. And if you don't have it, right, the chances are is you're going to croak over right there. How expensive it is that, you know, that you cannot enjoy your life with your spouse or with your kids or grandkids. How expensive is it to get to retirement where you have time, money, 
right? But yet you cannot use either one of those because you're sick. Think about that for a minute. When is the best time to invest in your health? Right? Sometimes people are like, well, yesterday, Dr. Jean Guy. I'm like, well, yesterday's over. Today's the best day ever, right? Today's the day. So here it says, should we have, right, this, this new model, right? Following men or following what God has for us. Number one is you got to know, right, in case you did not know that God wants you to be healthy. That's the first thing that you need to know because some people don't really believe that. And it's in the book. It tells us. I'll show you, right? I'll show you. This is in small print, but I just want to read this with you. I'm going to read just the top part, which is pretty amazing. This was in this book. It's called The Wellness Prevention Paradigm. Right? It says, the human, the human and financial cost of chronic illnesses are staggering. In the U.S. alone, heart disease and stroke cost about $1.3 billion, with a B. Cancer, $625 million. Diabetes, $477 million. Being obese is $402 million. Digestive disorder, 337 million per day. It says by 2002, spending on prescription drugs alone has reached 3.5 billion with a B per day, and by 2013 had surpassed 7 billion per day. This equates to 292 millions per hour, 4.9 millions per minute. It is estimated by 2017, medical treatment for chronic illness it will cost $4.3 trillion per year in the US alone. Right? Is that a lot of money? What do you think? But yet most people don't know that. They're like, hey, you know what? Let's just wait until it breaks. Let's just wait until my blood pressure goes up. I'll go see the doctor. He'll give me a pill. Let's just go wait until the cholesterol goes up. Then I'll go see the doctor. He's going to give me a pill. Let's just wait until I don't feel good and I'm about to lose my kidney. And I'll go see the doctor and then they'll do kidney dialysis on me. Let's just wait. Let's just wait. Let's just wait because if it's not broken, let's not fix it. Right? Let's just wait. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter if you're 20 years old or if you're like 67 years old, right? Don't wait. Who are you following? In Hosea 4, 6, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. People just don't know what they don't know. I don't believe that people are stupid. I just think people don't know. Right? And I'm glad that you're here tonight. I'm glad that you guys are watching this online or maybe other people down the road in a few, few days, maybe in a few weeks will watch this. People don't know what they don't know. You see what I'm saying? People are not stupid. They just don't know what they don't know. But you have to be willing to do your part. I tell people all the time, I'm like, listen, this is not going to be a, dict a dictatorship. It's a partnership. That means that you need to do your part. Right? This next one here in 1 Corinthians 6.19, it says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you? It says, Whom you have from God. Right? You are not your own, for you were, you were bought at a price, right? With a price to glorify God in your body. Now, I want you to think for a minute, right? In this physical body that you have, it's supposed to be the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? And it says you're supposed to glorify the Lord with this temple that you have. And if you were to just look in the mirror right now, or just on any given day, say, hey, you know what? Am I trying to do that every day? And what they're trying to, the model that they're giving us in this country and in another country, the model of healthcare, it's like, hey, you know what? If we manage your chronic illnesses and your disease, we're just going to call it good. And I'm here to tell you tonight that this is not Dr. Jean-Guy's model. I don't believe it's God's model. I think that, you know, this is our responsibility to take care of ourselves so we can be the best version of ourselves for the assignment that you have. I don't know what your assignment is. I know what mine is, right? Whatever assignment that you're on, you, wouldn't you like to be like the best that you can be until the last day? Versus you can end up going at Bircham Hills, which is like the nursing home down the road, right? You can be in a wheelchair, you can be drooling all over yourself for the remaining 10 years of your life. Which one would you like? Right? None of you want that. However, based on the decision that we make every day, we don't want it. But the decision that we make every day is going to take us there because we make bad decisions. Right? But it doesn't have to be. Right? It doesn't have to be. This next one here in Genesis 129, it says, And God said, Behold, right, I have given you every plant yielding seeds that is on the face of all the earth, and every trees with those seeds and its fruit. Right? You shall have them for food. So it doesn't say that you should be eating cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta. It doesn't say that. 
It doesn't say that. Right? People bring food to me. They're like, can you test that on me, Dr. Jean-Guy? I cannot even read the ingredient. There's like 57 of them. They're all in small print. That should be like a clue. Okay? If it's like real food, how many ingredients you think would be on the ingredient list? That's right. Right? Daryl was like, I won't say anything, but I'm just going to lift this one finger. He's like, one. So what should be your goal every day when we're putting this, this fine body called the temple, right? Your temple here, you know, the food that you're putting in, how many ingredients should be on that, like the ingredient list? As close as one as possible, right? So when people are like, well, could you just check this on me, Dr. Jean-Guy? I'm like, why would I bother? It's like, you know, say, hey, I'm, I'm putting this arsenic in my body every day. You know, can you just check to see if it's good for me? It's like, it's a no-brainer. The answer is no. Genesis 9.3, it says, every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. If it's moving, it's going down, right? And then you can eat it. And then it says, as I give you the green plants, I give you everything. So here it doesn't say, I gave you cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta, and then you can just bake cookies all day long, and you can just feed yourself with cookies. It doesn't say that. And it also doesn't say that, hey, you know what? I'm just going to eat cookies with moderation. I'm going to tell you something right now because this is Dr. Zhangi about moderation. Now listen to me. Some of you are going to laugh. You should all be laughing because we should have fun as we go through this. Right? I mean, it's a pretty serious topic, but at the same time, we should have fun. Now listen to me. Let's talk about doing things with moderation. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, let's do this. Okay, so if a person has chronic illnesses... And you're hoping to reverse the chronic illnesses. Let's say, for instance, you have high blood pressure. Or let's say, for instance, you have high cholesterol. Or let's say, for instance, your sugar has been high and you're trying to bring it down. Right? If your wish is to turn that around, it's like a freight train that is going 100 miles an hour. You need to slow it down. You need to stop it. And you need to go the other way. So when you start doing things with moderation, say, well, instead of having, you know, 10 cookies a day, I'm just going to have seven. I mean, it's going to take a long time to just slow down this strain and to stop it and go the other way, right? Most likely what's going to happen before you stop the train is you're already going to have cancer and you already have things that you can't reverse because it's too late. Do you see what I'm saying? So I don't want people to fool you and say, hey, just do things in moderation. I mean, you can tell yourself that story, but if you're really like, if your intent is like, hey, you know what? I need to be serious about that. If you already have it, it's like, i got to be serious. Because otherwise, it's going to take time. And sometimes you run out of time. Right? You see what I'm saying? So I want you to understand that, because this is important, right? People are like, well, Dr. Jean-Guy, I've been eating carrots now for a month. It's just not working for me. I'm like, listen. Listen, Linda. Right? It's not working. How can you be thinking this way? This has been going on for decades. You cannot just be eating carrots for one month. It's going to be all better, right? It just makes no sense. Daniel 1.12, here's what it says. It says, please test your servant for 10 days. Give them nothing but vegetables. Make sure you don't eat any cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta. See what happened, right? It's amazing when people go on a cleanse and they just stop eating for a while. They're like, I feel so much better. I can sleep so much better. My blood pressure went down. My blood sugar went down. Duh. Right? Of course, when you start putting the raw material that your body needs, it's like, hey, all of us here tonight, we all have the same blueprint. Do you know what, you know what that means? That means that our genes are the same. All of us here tonight. The blueprint is the same. You build a house, the, the blueprint of the house is the same. What is not the same is how we're going to be building the walls. So how do you want to build your walls? Do you think that if you start eating cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta, that those walls are going to be real strong? No, those walls are going to be on fire. That's what they're going to be. And you have no chance. Right? I mean, let's just be honest. I don't want to be like, I don't want to be a pessimist, but I'm just telling you that, hey, you know what? We have to do better. We all have to do better. Now, is sometimes you're going to be falling off track. Yes, you will. Right? But you have to understand that we need to get back on track. We need to put real food, real raw material into this body because this body, you gotta, if you don't have the right raw material, you can't build the walls, right? Does that make sense? Oh, I mean, I want some of those. 
I mean, any one of you here like don't want one of those? Of course, she doesn't want. I mean, you guys are amazing. She's like, I'd take it maybe. What did you say? It's not chocolate. No, well, this one is chocolate. Oh, I see. Well, okay, well, maybe later you'll get a picture of the chocolate one. They're coming. Right? They're coming. So this is food, and this is not, this is like, this is non-food. On the ingredient list, there's a lot of stuff that you cannot say what that is, right? And on this year, there's only one thing on the ingredient list. Yes? So having this understanding to say, well, Dr. Jean-Guy, you know, I mean, what should I be eating? Well, you should eat food. How do we define that? Well, if there's many things on the ingredient list, it's probably not the best for you. Yes? yes. You don't need to have a PG nutrition. We just need common sense. We need to be reminded to say, hey, what does food comes from? It comes from the soil, from the tree, or that it's moving. And if it's moving, then you need to go back and ask, you know, where's that coming from? Right? If those chicken now, think about those little chicken right now that they call free range. You can have like a square 20 by 20 with a little hole in the wall this big, and they call that free range, and you can have, you know, you can have a thousands of those chicken in there. And then they're pooping on top of each other. We're just giving, feeding them crap, soy, corn, and all the bad stuff, right? And then guess what's going to happen? Then you're going to butcher them, and you're going to have them in your plate in front of you. That sounds like yummy, doesn't it? I mean, if I was to give you stories like this right before you eat, would you, you think, would you be eating less? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I would think that some of you would be like, I think that I'm going to pass on this meal. Right? In the book of Numbers, it says, we remember the fish that we ate in Egypt that cost nothing, the cucumbers, the melon, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. It doesn't say cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta. It doesn't say that. Right? I mean, they were slaves in Egypt, but they were still giving them food because they wanted them to produce. That's a piece of fish. Yes? You guys ever seen that? It's called a piece of fish. Okay? I mean, when it's fried, right, and you don't see what's in there, it's probably not fish. They might call it fish, right? But it's probably something else that is, that is probably not food. It's man-made. Do you know how they make B vitamins in this country? Anybody knows? They make B vitamins out of coal tar. In Ohio, that's how they make B vitamins. Do you know why they use coal tar to make them? It's because it's cheap. So if you're taking your multi B vitamins, right, that is made out of coal tar, that's real good for you, in case you didn't know, which most people, that's what they do. Do you know where you find whole food B vitamins? You find it out of nutritional yeast. You find that out of, out of weed germ oil. This is where you find in nature whole food B vitamins. People today, they're just much depleted in B vitamins. What does that do? It causes heart disease, causes cancer, causes people to be sick, causes problems with people's blood sugar, right? But that's okay. We got a pill for that. The more K cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, and pasta that you eat, right? The more that it steals all your B vitamins out of your system. And then you're completely B vitamins deficient. So then your heart's going to fail. That's okay. We got a pill for that, right? And if we don't have enough pill, we can't keep you very long. You're just going to croak over. No big deal, right? Way before your time. Why would anybody would want, would want that? But we just don't realize because we don't know what we don't know, right? This is food. That's what I want to show you. Those are, you know, something green. Those green things, you should just like eat those every day. Like those green things, I don't know what they are, but you know those green things? Right? In the book of Proverbs, it says, My son, eat honey, for it is good. Make sure that it's dripping all over your face. Yes? You can have honey. <laughs> you should have honey that is like uh, coming from wildflower. It's kind of hard today, right? My talk to my mom today. That's her birthday. Right? 75 years old. Gets up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Goes on her walk for a couple hours. Yesterday, she went to see her friends. Two-hour walk to go see her at the nursing home. Then she comes back, watches her show a sermon. I don't know what she watched, but she watched some kind of sermon a few times a day. Once in a while, she calls me and she just whines because her knees are hurting. I'm like, well, what have you been eating? For sure, I know what happened, right? She just doesn't tell me. She just want to complain. She's like, yeah, but my friends don't have that. I'm like, yeah, but how many drugs are your friends on? 
Well, she's like, many. I'm like, how many are you on? None. I'm like, okay, how about if you just try to stop eating sugar for the next few days? And then guess what happened? I talked to her every day. So a couple days later, right? She's like, I'm feeling so much better. I'm like, huh, wonder why. Right? 75 years old. How would you like to be 75 years old? You just get up every morning or you get up and you just go for a two-hour walk, go see your friend that is in a nursing home. How would you like that? Do you know that there's only one person that makes it to the age of 60 years old without taking a prescription medication? Only one person out of a thousand that make it to 60 years old without taking prescription medication. Only one out of a thousand. Think about that for a minute. That's a pretty small number. Would you agree? That's pretty small. That's honey. In 2 Chronicle, now check this out. It says, note that the acts of Asa, first and last, are indeed written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Right, 12, it says, in the 39th year of his reign, right, Asa became diseased in his feet, and his malady was, was severe, yet in his disease he did not seek the Lord, but the physician. So Asa rested with his father, and he died for the 41st year of his reign. The reason why I have this up there is like, you know, oftentimes people have more faith, you know, in many other things, right? In this particular case, you know, he had more faith in, you know, here's the physician than God for his healing. People believe that, you know, God's going to heal them, but yet, right? They're like, well, let's go see the doctor, Right? There is a doctor inside of you. I call people doctor all the time. They look at me weird. I'm like, hey, this is Dr. Trudy right here. She's like, I'm not a doctor. I'm like, yes, you are. There's one inside of you. And people look at me weird like I'm an alien. Well, I might be one, but, you know. And then they're like, well, why would you say that to me? I'm like, there's a doctor inside of you, right? Because that's the way God made you. God wants you to be healthy. If you were to have diarrhea today or you were to have a fever, are you healthy or you're sick? Don't lie to me. Most of you would be like, well, I'm sick, right? But really the reality of it is you're healthy. But you've been told that, you know, yeah, you're sick. Well, when something is bad on the inside, if you were to go at the restaurant and you were eat some non-food and you walk out of the restaurant, you start puking, are you healthy or you're sick? No, you're healthy. Your body's getting rid of the crap because it didn't belong there. Right? I want you to think of this. You got to reframe the way those bodies are working. If your carotid arteries were clogged up, what would happen to your blood pressure? Yeah, it would go up. Doesn't mean you're sick or you're healthy. No, you're healthy. Your body is responding exactly the way it should respond because you made poor decision. So then those arteries are clogged up in order to bring nutrient and food to your brain. Then we're just going to push harder to get it there. Isn't it smart or what? The best doctor that I know lives right on the inside of you. And the body is only adapting to the environment that you're putting the body through. Right? I'm going to say this again. Your body is only adapting to the environment that you're putting your body through. What does that mean? That means that a person can have like, is there's a lot of women that have breast cancer gene? There's hundreds of thousands of women in this country that have the breast cancer gene, but there's hundreds of thousands, you know, there's probably millions of them, right? But there's hundreds of thousands of them that don't get breast cancer. Why do you think that is? Something needs to activate those genes. Right? Something needs to activate the gene. Those, the activation of the gene has to do with how you treat your body into the environment. So let's say, for instance, I'm going to give you an example. Let's pretend that you were to eat cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta. Right? Do you think that that would be friendly to your immune system? What do you think? Of course not. Do you think that if your immune system cannot protect you, you think that you're more likely or less likely to get cancer? What do you think? Yeah, you're more likely. All of you, you already know that. When you're in flame, your immune system goes down, so then it's not there to protect you. Did you know that if you look in a normal physiology book, in a normal person, your body produces 40, cell, 40 times cancer cells in your body per day, and your immune system recognizes it and take care of it? 40 times per day. That's what it does. Is that pretty cool or what? That's why I'm calling all of you doctors, because there's one on the inside of you. Right? Look at this one. It says, Isaiah 7, 22, it says, uh, 
It says, and because of the abundance of milk that they give, we'll eat curd for everyone who is left in the land. Here's some more curd, some more honey, some more milk, right? So I want to tell you a little bit about cheese for a minute, about milk, about like everybody in the world of nutrition, they all agree that we should be eating food, right? That's what I've been preaching to you tonight. And then there are some people here in one, on one side here that they believe in, you know, in the world of dairy. But if you were to have dairy, you should only have raw dairy. What does that mean? That means that it wouldn't be pasteurized. It wouldn't be homogenized. So in the state of Michigan, you can have like raw cheese, but you cannot have raw milk unless you own a cow or a share of a cow. You follow me, right? So what happened is when they pasteurize the milk or the dairy, or they pasteurize anything, anything that was good in there, they just kill it. How's that sound? So then when you go to the store and then some of you are like, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm trying to be healthy, so I'm going to go buy some milk that is 0% fat. I'm like, is this the way that it comes out from the cow at 0%? What do you think? Think about that for a minute. But maybe you've been doing this because you don't know better. You're like, well, they've told us that if I eat fat, I'm going to be fat. Did you know that the United States of America for the past 50 years we've been eating less fat than ever before but yet we're fatter than we've ever been? Do you want me to say this again? In the past 50 years we've been eating less fat than ever before but we're fatter than we've ever been. That doesn't make sense, does it? But when you eat cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta, though, guess what happened? All this excess sugar that you have in your body when, it's, when you cannot store the sugar... Your body is going to turn that into fat. How's that sound? Right? That's what your body does with the sugar. It turns into fat. And then it makes your body on fire. And when your body is on fire, then it starts breaking down. Right? So that's what we don't want. That's why we want to put more food into those bodies. Let's go to this next one. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, For I know the plans I have for you. It says, Declares the Lord, Plan for welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and hope. God wants you to be healthy, in case you didn't know. Dr. Cody, can you just crack those doors open? Those guys are going to pass out on me. I mean, they're hot. I mean, she's like, okay. Don't pass out on me, okay? We're almost there. Jeremiah 41, 8, it says, But there were ten men among them who said to Ishmael, Do, do not put us to death, for we have stores of wheat, barley, oil, hidden honey, hidden in the field. Right? When people say this word here, wheat, and then tonight I've been talking to you about wheat, corn, soy, right? people always ask me, they're like, well, did Jesus feed, you know, he feed people with bread. I mean, bread must be good. I guess bread was good. I'm not sure that if you go get some Aunt Millie's bread that you can get 10 loaves for $2, you know? <laughs> now, I know some of you, you're thinking, well, Dr. jean Guy, you know me, it's whole wheat. Matter of fact, I had this guy asking me that last week. He's like, well, you know, when you read the label... And it says, and rich whole wheat. What does that mean? I'm like, that means the company is getting rich. And rich. The company is getting rich. Right? Because when you have something that it says, and rich, what they do is they take a grain, which is perfect by nature, which is was perfect. And then what they do is they manipulate it. They take the fat out of it. They take the protein out of it. They take the B vitamins out of it. And then the only thing they leave there is the, the sugar part of it where you can put it on the shelf for the next 15 years, or even the rats won't touch it. And then you at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, when you're done working, you go to the store and you buy it, because you're like, tonight I don't feel like cooking, so I'm going to make some spaghetti. Right? People do that, right? Do they do that? I mean, am I the only one? I mean, of course people do that. But I want you to understand that if you can leave it on the shelf for the next 15 years, that might not be the best thing. Right? And then what they do to the grain is they genetically modify them. About 90% of the grain in this country are genetically modified. So guess what happened when you put it inside of you? Your body doesn't know what to do with it. Right? Ninety percent of the grain in this country, they're being subsidized by the government. The government pays for the farmers to just make more grain. Right? It's like a big cycle, like the big cycle of like we're just killing you softly. How's that sound? We're killing you softly. How's that sound? Right? I know some of you are just smiling. Some of you are crying. Some of you don't know. You have no emotion. It sounds like Dr. Jean-Guy. I mean, sometimes I have no emotion. Right? Daryl's like, I don't know. 
the cycle of like, you know, we're going to kill you softly. All of us here tonight, and if you're watching, right, you have to make the decision how you want to live your life. Does that make sense? And what you're putting into this body has a lot to do with what you can do. When people say, well, I can't exercise because I'm hurting. Do you know that about just about 100% of when people have pain, you can trace it back to this one word. Do you know what the one word is? Who can just shout out loud what the one word is? It's called inflammation. Inflammation is like putting gas in the fire. And the first part of inflammation is if when you eat cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta, it's like putting gas in the fire. So can all of you here, including me, could we do something about that? Right? If you were to be hurting, right? If you were to eat less cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta, would you, you think that your pain would be better? The answer is yes. Okay, for, for sure, all of us with no exception. You don't need to have a pain pill. You could take a pain pill and tell your brain that you have no pain, right? But would that be the solution? Are you taking care of the effect or are you taking care of the cause? Let's say that you're taking a blood pressure pill. Now your blood pressure goes back down to 120 over 80. Are you taking care of the effect or are you taking care of the cause? Right? But the doctor, yeah, the doctor would say, hey, you know what? We're managing your disease. That sounds, you're, that, that's good. Those numbers look good. But is that taking care of the problem though? Right? If you were to wake up in the morning and your blood sugar is 100, but yet you're taking insulin and you're taking glucophage and you're taking metformin, are we taking care of the cause? You're taking care of the disease or are you taking care of the effect? Right? We always want to be thinking like we need to get back towards the cause. What's causing it? What's causing the problem? Right? Temporarily, a person might take their blood pressure pill. They might take their sugar pill. But the goal is to get back to the cause. What's causing it? Right? We want to find out what's causing it. That's what if there's one thing I want to teach you tonight of what's causing it. If the service engine light goes on in your car and you put duct tape over it, right? you don't see the light. But yet, you're like, something's going to happen. You see what I'm saying? People don't have headaches because they have a lack of aspirin in their brain. There's a reason for it. You see what I'm saying? If a person is carrying an extra 10, 15, 20 pounds, you know, extra, there's a reason for that. You've got to find out what's causing it. Right? There's people that are like, well, I just look at food and I put weight on. Well, there must be a reason for that. We need to get to the reason. You see what I'm saying? We want to find out what's causing it. Here's this next one, Ezekiel 4.9. It says, and you take the wheat, the barley, the beans, the lentils, the millet, emmer, which is a, a type of wheat, you put it into a single vessel, make the bread, and here you go. Right? Some of you here, maybe you eat some Ezekiel 4.9 bread, which is just the name of the company, but those are sprouted grain. So what that means, we don't use flour to make the bread, we just use sprouted grain. In general, those are usually better for you. Right? In general, if you don't have problems with wheat or gluten. You see what I'm saying? And usually those kind of bread, you know, if you leave it on the corner there on your, on your table for a few days, it's going to turn bad. Oh, I don't want that. I would rather just have it on the corner of the table for the next three weeks and it still look great. It's still all mushy and it's just like the moisture is great. Right? Do you see how like we just we live in this like environment that we want things to be convenient? And that's okay. It's just that at some point in time, it just catches up to us. Would you agree? Does that make sense? Right? So sometimes we have to change the way we think, right? To just say, hey, you know what? I need to invest now. I need to invest a little bit now. Because I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, now listen to me because this is important. Some of you already know that. Right? When people are like, it's too expensive. I'm like, hey, you know what? It's either good, you're going you're gonna to pay now or you're going to pay later. You're going to pay both ways. You're still going to pay. Usually when you pay later, though, not only you pay, but you're also miserable in the midst of paying for it. And that's the sad part. Right? 47.12, it says, on the banks, on both sides of the river, they will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not, I'm French, I can't say that word, wither, or something like that. Right? It says, nor their fruit will fail. It says, but will be fresh, fresh fruit every month because of the water and then flow in the sanctuary. Right? Their fruit will be for food and then their leaves for healing. We see that today in the healing world, right? Do people use herbs for healing? For healing? The answer is yes. We want to be eating more food. That's the goal. That's the more of the story. Here's the next one. Here's what it says. Jeremiah 30, 17. It says, for I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. I just want you to know again, for some of you that might be doubting, you're like, oh, God doesn't want me to be healthy. Yes, he does want you to be healthy. 
The problem is we're dealing with people that don't really have your health as an interest. They don't really care about your health, right? We're creating this, this massive community of people that are sick and dying and suffering, which is sad, right? And people don't have to be this way. I would like to see a bunch of like my mother running around at 75 years old, 80 years old, 85 years old, and people can walk for two hours. They can just watch their show and do whatever they want, whatever they want. It. How does that sound? If you're young and you're 20 years old, like I see some of, a few of you, you might not just like, you're like, you know, I mean, who cares? I mean, I'm still young, right? But as we're getting older, yes, Dr. jean Guy will be like 50 years old. I mean, believe it or not, in October, right? I think I'm getting a little bit older, okay? Just a little bit. It says, 1 Timothy 5, 5, 23, it says, no longer drinks only water, we use a little wine. I know some of you here, you were wondering about that. You're like, hey, can I have a little bit of wine? Right? This lady back there, she's like, hey, you know, give me some of that. Right? The problem here, I want to tell you, I mean, one more thing. I want to tell you one more thing. Are you ready? We're almost there, but I want to tell you one more thing. You know, when people seize those things, it's just like, people just like, they make out of things what they want to make out of things. What sounds good to them? I mean, in the world of wine, is there's like wine that is more quality than others. I mean, some of it is like, you know, you just want to use it to just rinse the toilet bowl. This is how you should use it, not to put it in your body. Okay? I mean, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. The food, it's, you know, some of the food, the way that it's made, right? Like those little baby carrots, they bathe them in, in chlorine to make them last longer. Why would you even put that in your body? This lady came in today. She's like this Velveta cheese. I'm like, this Velveta cheese? This is like the worst cheese you can put in your body. It's like, it's poison. It's poison. At the end of the day, you know, the cheese factory, they just drag everything on the, on the ground that is left over, that is dirty, you know, and that's the Velveta cheese. Why would anybody put that in their body? Why would anybody do that? It's like you got to have some standard. You got to understand this stuff is poison. Yeah, but it tastes good. I'm like, okay, I just want you to know it's either you're going to pay now or later. That's the honest truth. Don't just look around and say, I don't understand how it happens. We do understand how it happens. Okay? I'm just, I mean, smile, okay? Let's have fun with this. I mean, but that's the truth. Okay? That's the truth. When I worked on the farm, now check this out. When I worked on the farm, I was a little boy at the time. Right? And there's two of the neighbors. They had... They had those two guys that what they were in charge of on the farm of my, our neighbors, they had bigger farms. And as I got older, I worked on the farm until I was 18 years old. As I got older, they had some people that were, they started to just spray the crop 40 hours a week. That's what they did. The best time to spray the crop was first time in the morning when the wind is down. So when you spray it, it doesn't just like, you know, go everywhere. Right? You follow me? So those two guys there, right? When I'm a little boy, I'm about 16, 17 years old now. Right, those two guys that are spraying the crop, you know, 40 hours a week, because you know those guys had big farms, right? Both of them at the age 55, they both died from kidney cancer. Now that's just a story, okay? But it's making me think a little bit that when they had their hands and their feet in those chemicals and breeding this stuff, and back in those days they weren't protecting themselves, right? That that's just like it's telling me that I don't know. It's making me think that maybe. That could have been like cause and effect, maybe. Or maybe just like one more thing, right? It says here in 3 John 1, 2, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may all go well with you, that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. God wants you to be healthy. Here it says, don't tell me to improve my diet. I ate a carrot once and nothing happened, Right? I know this looks funny, but people will tell me things that are pretty close to that. So I want you to know tonight, it's like, hey, you know what? It doesn't always taste good, but you don't eat for the taste. You eat for the fuel when you eat for like, you know, what do you want out of your, like when you get to be 50, 60, 70, 80, what do you want? And my little trick for you tonight is this is what I tell people all the time. And if you know me, you've heard this from me. It's like, hey, you got to find out what your why is. What is your why? What is your why? What is your why? If your why is not big enough, you're not going to do it. If your why is not big enough, you're not going to do it. Right? Some of you are like, I don't know if I can do it. I'm like, well, your why needs to be big enough. Is your why is you want to see your kids? You want to walk them out? You want, you want to 
walk them down the aisle when they get married? Is your wise because you want to get on the ground? You want to play with your grandkids? Is your wise you want to go with your spouse and travel the world? What is your why? Right? If your why is not big enough, you're not going to do it. Your why has to be big enough. When people come to the office, I guarantee you that just about every one of you in here, if you come to the office and I start taking care of you, I know I can help you. I know that. I know how to do it. I know what to do. I know how to do it. But if your why is not big enough, you're not going to get better. Because God can heal you just like that, but in the natural world, it takes time and repetition. Yes? Say yes. yes. Very good. Say yes. Give me a thumbs up online. They're all giving me a thumbs up. Okay? We're getting closer. We're almost there. Hey, here's another one about honey. Okay, we're done with that. You guys can have honey. You can do a search pretty quickly in the Bible now to find out if, what kind of words you find, right? So I just look up at cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, and pasta. Here's what it says. You know cake, and I'm going to tell you when you put things in context, it's not the cake that people eat today. Yes, the cakes were not the same. And then cookies, zero candy, zero no ice cream. Bread, it says 331, but it was not Aunt Millie's. I guarantee you Jesus did not feed 15,000 people, you know, 10, 12,000 people with crappy bread. That just didn't happen. Did not happen. Right? This next one, he says rice, zero, pasta, zero. It's not there. I didn't find it. So when we let those things enter your body that, you know, that we already know it's poison, Right? It's like a person comes in and we do some allergy clearing at her office and one time this lady, she's like, can you desensitize me from sugar? I'm like, why would I do that? It's poison. Like I'm, I'm just, you know, I want to eat rat poison. Why would I desensitize you of that? That's silly. It's poison. What fits in your busy schedule? Exercising one hour a day being dead. Okay, here's a, here's a repeat to make sure that if you missed it, some of you missed it. So questions are powerful. So as we're leaving here tonight, those are questions I want you to ask yourself. Right? Those are questions I want you to ask yourself. The first one here, it says, if it comes from the ground or from the soil, then I should ask what? Right? How is the soil and how are those like whatever that is, right? If you're eating carrots or you're eating beets or you're eating potatoes or you're eating onions or parsley, you know, where is that coming from? Would that be a good question? What do you think? Right? So at the Rasso Daniel compound and farm, you know, when we have this little cow just walking around, we don't give them names because by the time they got to sacrifice themselves, you know, that's bad. So, you know, guess what they're eating? They're eating grass. You know, sometimes people are like, well, why aren't you just like finishing them up with grain? You know, they just have all this fat that's going to be good. I'm like, because I don't want that. They're like, well, it's not going to be as good. I'm like, I don't care. I don't grow them for you, I grow them for me. If you want some, you can have some. So when those little cows are walking around, guess what they're eating? They're eating the grass. And then we harvest the hay from the property, and then we just guess what they're going to eat in the winter when they cannot eat the grass. They're going to eat what comes from the grass. And then when it's time, when is that going to be? I don't know. I mean, you know, when I decide like it's time, now you call and they're like, well, it might be in a year from now. I'm like, okay, put me on the list. Or sometimes last week we tried to get one in the trailer and the, the cow wouldn't get in. I'm like, what are you doing? I think she knew what was coming. So I guess we're on the list for a few months. But what about if you have like hundreds of them and thousands of them and then we pump them up with antibiotic and hormones their whole life and we're giving them soy and corn and all this stuff that is just non-food. And then you go to the store and you're looking for the cheapest meat possible, Right? And then you buy that, and you're like, yeah, it was cheap, I got a good deal. I have no problem with deal, but sometimes you have to look, I'm like, okay, well, what kind of deal did you get, and what is that going to do long term? Right? This fine body of yours, this machine, this temple that you have, sometimes finding a deal might not be always the best thing to do. You see what I'm saying? So if it comes from the tree, then you should ask what question? How are those trees being taken care of? Do you know that if you're buying things like strawberries, you can go like they have, they have like companies, they specialize to find out how much pesticides and herbicides there is in our food. Do you know that the dirtiest food that there is are the berries? Strawberries, they just put at least anywhere from 
50 to 60 different chemicals on them to try to keep, to keep them away from the bugs. So what I would say to you tonight is, for instance, right, we have that. Any one of you here can have that. We have this little piece of paper. It's called the dirty dozen and the clean 15. The dirty dozen is like, hey, those 12 there, don't ever eat them unless they're organic. And the clean 15, those are the ones that are not as bad. So if you're on a budget, the dirty dozen, you cannot get those conventional. You got to buy them organic. But the clean 15, not as bad, then you can have those regular if you want to. Like those avocados, for some reason, you know, the, the skin is pretty thick. So for some reason, those chemicals don't penetrate through as bad. You see what I'm saying? The dirty dozen, clean 15, there's like... Companies, they specialize in that to find out which one are the dirtiest of the dirtiest. Should you be aware of that? I think so, right? And then last but not least, it says if it comes from the animal, then you want to know how the animals were treated. This is important. I want you to think here for a minute that if we are importing food, let's say from Chile, that there's some like avocados that are coming from Chile. Right? We're spending like those big planes are just burning fuel and we're bringing those avocados here and then we radiate them when they come into the country and then we're like, okay, here's your avocados and they're, they're organic. Or maybe some of you, you want to have like some organic strawberries 12 months out of the year. It doesn't work that way. I mean, you don't live in California. Right? I mean, maybe if you're there, you can have strawberries all year round. But if you're here in Michigan, it doesn't work that way. So there's some people, they believe that, hey, you know what? Whatever is in season, that's what you should be eating. That's probably what's best for you. You see what I'm saying? So when you go to the store and you're looking for food and you're like, oh, this comes from like, you know, this whatever country, whatever that is. And you're like, whoa, but that it's organic. Do you know that this probably been traveling for a long time before we get to whole food or before we get to those little strawberries that you want to have in middle winter when it's minus 30? Right? So trying to get some connection with people that are farming around, which we have those people, right? And try to get our food from those people. Oftentimes, it's probably a much better choice. You see what I'm saying? And many of those farmers, many of them, they don't like, they're not an organic farm, but they don't use any chemicals on their food. So could that be a better choice? Say yes. yes. Okay, that was the right answer. Stay away from... This is called white trash, white flour, hydrogenated oil. There's three names for hydrogenated oil. It's called also partially hydrogenated oil, fractionated, right? And then processed meat and hydrolyzed soy. This is in everything. If there's a label on it, the chances are it's in there. And then white sugar, soft drink, high fructose corn syrup. Did you know that it just in this little can of pop there that you have, right? There's over 12 teaspoons of sugar in there, one can of pop. 12 teaspoon of sugar. Do you guys realize that when people have 10 can of pop a day, whether you give them 12 or 13, it's not going to make a difference. When you feel bad, you don't know that you feel bad until you feel better. Would you agree? Right? Some of you are like, I don't know. I just feel bad all the time. So I don't know what feeling good is. But I'm just, I'm telling you, when people start feeling better, like, it's a game changer. Right? How would you like to get up every morning, feel good every morning? How would you like that? Right? I mean, no, none of you would say no. Though people don't tell me, they're like, I really want to be sicker. People don't say that. They're like, no, of course I want to be healthier. I'm like, okay. Then the decision we make every day, it's got to be decision for health, right? And every one of you here can do that. Now, based on what I told you tonight, do you think that there's room? Do you think that there's like maybe a, a little gap into what we're eating or the lack of nutrient that we have to, for people to take supplements? What do you think? Right? The answer is yes. If you've been around before, I mean, I've already said that. You already know what I think about this is like you should, everybody should be on nutrition basic. You should be like a, taking organic multivitamins, you know, minerals. You should be taking fish oil until the day you croak over. You should be taking vitamin D until the last day. All of you, no exception. doesn't matter who you are. Now, obviously, if you go to Walmart and buy fish oil, right? I mean, I'm not sure. I think you should save your money and go on a cruise instead. There's this thing called quality, which most people don't know anything about, about supplements, right? So they just buy anything. They're like, that, I got a good deal. You got to understand sometimes a good deal as it relates to your health. I'm all about deal. But as it relates to your health, sometimes it's better not to have the deal. 
That's right. So is there room for this thing called supplements? The answer is yes. Right? And that's the reason why we, you know, we do what we do nutritionally at, you know, this place here at Gilead. That when we do nutritional assessment, and I want to share a little bit of that with you tonight. Some of you are already doing this, right? But I just want to, I just want to tell you a little bit more information so you have the understanding of why do we do that. So when we do our nutritional well, uh, or, or nutritional breakthrough evaluation, right? The reason why we do this is because we know that if you haven't put the right raw material in your body for, you know, for most of your years, right? A person gets to be 30, 40, 50 years old, or even at a young age, there's more and more children now and kids and little babies that are sick all the time. There's a reason for that. Do you know that whatever is in the mom, it's going to be in the baby? So if the mom is not healthy, the baby is not going to be healthy. So you see kids that are sick right from day one. You don't have to be 50, 60 years old. Some of you, you already see it. You see it in your kids. You see it in your grandkids. Some of your kids, they're sick all the time. You know, they have, you know, they have their menstrual cycle. and They're always bent over and they have pain and they have heavy flow. Do you know why, like, those little girls, when they're 12 years old, they have their first menstrual cycle? That might be more than what you want to know. I'm going to tell you because it's like, it's got to come out, Okay. And you're 12 years old and you start having your first menstrual cycle and you're just bent over and it's heavy and you're grumpy. Do you know that normal menstrual cycle is like having none of that? Did you know that? It's having none of that. No pain. No heavy for like the next five days. No grumpiness. Do you know that that's what normal is? Do you know what normal is about headaches? It's to have zero headaches. Zero. People come to the office all the time. They're like, Dr. jean I have normal headaches. I'm like, what's that? Three, four hours a day, you know, five days a week. I'm like, no, normal is zero. When a person is healthy, you don't have any symptoms. You're healthy. You're vibrant. And when you do have symptoms like you're pooping your pants, you have diarrhea, that's also healthy because your body is adapting to the environment. When you have a fever, that's called being healthy. Did you know that? Right? Most people don't know that. They're like, I've got a fever. I'm sick. I'm like, no, you're not sick. You're healthy. If your body was not to adapt and then you died, then that's not healthy. But if your core temperature goes up and it kills the bug, that's called being healthy. Do you see how we need to change the way we think? Right? So when we do the nutritional evaluation, I tell people first and foremost, I said, hey, you know what? When it comes out to your health, you can do whatever you want because that's your health. But just imagine that whatever problems you have, you don't do anything about it and you just wait. You wait for another three months or six months or a year or two years. Do you think it's going to get better or worse? What are the chances? Right? Knowing that something could have been done. So when we do this nutrition wellness breakthrough evaluation, the reason why we do that is because we want to find out, right, if there's any kind of nutritional deficiency. Because when people have been eating cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta for many years, right, people have nutritional deficiencies. Yes? Can you see that? And then the organs start breaking down. And when the organ break down, then you start having chronic illnesses. Chronic illnesses means, right? Now listen to me for a minute and then we'll be done. Are you ready? I know some of you, I'm just losing you, but just like a few more minutes. Now hang tight. If there's 100 people here tonight, are you ready? If there's 100 people here tonight, this group here, this 50 people here, they're going to die from heart disease. The other two-thirds of the room here at the front are going to die from cancer. And the other one-third here at the front, they're going to die from something that is related to being overweight. Those are the statistics. People don't die because they're in car accident. It's just like, it's like, this much. If there's a hundred people here tonight, half of the room gonna die from heart disease, the other two-thirds gonna die from cancer, the other one-third are gonna die from something that is related from being overweight. Put that in your pipe and just start smoking. Yes? Now I want you to think of this here. And all of those things that I just told you here, if you choose to, if we start taking better care of our body, we can avoid the vast majority of that. That's the good news. And I want to be the bearer of good news tonight to say, hey, you know what? If we start taking better care of our body, we're going to live longer. We're going to be able to enjoy life. We're going to be able to live our life, your life, you know, 100% until the last day, whenever the last day is. How does that sound? Who would not want to have that by raising your hand? Who would not want that? Don't See, Daryl, I just almost tricked him. He was about to do this. I mean, I did it on purpose. I was trying to trick him. He went like, right? I'm like, good job, Daryl. I mean, he's on it, right? That's amazing. Right, so when, when, when we do our nutrition wellness break, break to evaluation, initially what we do is we have people, you know, fill out all those questions, right? Because questions are, you know, we ask them people question when they fill this out, it's called a symptom survey. The reason why we do this is because 
When you ask questions like, hey, you know what? Do you wake up at night and you have like cramping or Charlie horse? Now, this is not like a full-blown disease. But if a person has Charlie horse, they wake up at night, that means they're nutritionally deficient. That's what it means. Those are the kind of questions we ask. Right? If a person says, I always wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, that might not mean nothing to your doctor, but to me, right? It means a lot to me. It means that you have some nutritional deficiencies, that your adrenal glands don't work properly. That's what it means. You see what I'm saying? Right? So we're having you fill out this paperwork so we know we can dial in exactly what's, what's the problem nutritionally with you. And then after that, we do this thing called the heart rate variability. Do you know what that is? How many of you know where the heart rate variability is? Right? You don't know, and I don't know either, but, you know, I was told. I'm just kidding. Right? When you do a heart rate variability, there's thousands of studies. You can go on Dr. Google right now, and what it does, it finds out how your organs are functioning on the inside. And it's called, it's regulated by your autonomic nervous system. I don't want to use big words, but that's kind of a big word. Your autonomic nervous system is, you know, you have your sympathetic, which is your fight or flight, then you have your parasympathetic, which is your feed or breathe, yes? And those guys should be in balance. Today in this world, do you think that people are more in a, in a sympathetic mode or in a parasympathetic mode? What do you think? It's called sympathetic. It's called fight or flight. The lion is out of the cage and it's chasing all of you. And you guys are like, yeah, I got to go. I got to go. Do you know when your sympathetic nervous system is like this, then your immune system goes like that. And then guess what happened to the ability to defend yourself from bugs? It goes down. When your sympathetic nervous system goes up, guess what happened to your blood pressure? Guess what happened to your blood sugar? Guess what happened to your fat? You make more fat, your blood pressure goes up, your blood sugar goes up, right? So we do this test to find out how this system is working. And then after that, we do this thing called the body composition analysis, it's called BCA, and we can find out where your fat is at. That's kind of scary, isn't it? <laughs> because what happened, let me tell you this here, this is really important, right? If you have like, if you have, you know, when you have fat around the organ, it's good to have fat, but when they're around the organ, they're choking them, then we know that you're more prone to have heart disease or, you know, a stroke. So that's kind of a big deal. And then after that, right, we do the actual nutritional testing. When we do the testing, then we can, what we're looking for is, we're looking, we use kinesiology testing, which is muscle testing, and we look for two things. At the most simplistic level in your body, there's 70 trillion cells, 70 trillion cells, and all those cells are either lacking of something or they could be toxic with something. And if you're lucky, you could have both, right? Some of you are like, ha-ha. You're being sarcastic, Dr. jean I'm like, well, yeah, most people, they have both. They're lacking of stuff, and they're toxic with stuff, right? So we can find that out. So you can find out if there's something that is missing in your body nutritionally, and we can also find out if you're toxic with something. For instance, if you were to be allergic to eggs, we could find that out, right? Or if you were to be allergic to, let's say your body is, well, strawberries, that would most likely be the chemicals on the strawberries. Right? If you have problems with mercury or formaldehyde, right, we could find that out. Now let's say, for instance, you go get a blood drawn and they just look at it just like they look at food sensitivity. How much do you think they charge you for that? Right? This lady here at the front, she's like, I don't know. I'm like, hey, this lady just sent me a text today. I have it. I could read it to you, but we don't have time for that. Here's what she said. She went to get this test. It was worthless anyway, but she went to get the test. Right? She's like, well, I just spent $500, $400 for the test. And it was worthless. I'm like, yeah. But let's pretend that it would have been something that it gives you some good information. Would that be worth it? If you knew exactly what you can eat or not eat, would that be good? Right? If you knew, yes. The answer is yes. Obviously, her test was worthless, and I told her that. She was mad. But I didn't do it. I mean, she's the one who went to get the test. I didn't tell her which test to go get. She didn't ask me. Right? When a person comes to her office, we usually charge $250, $250 to do this test on people. Right, when a person comes off the street. Obviously, some of you here, you've already done that, right? You're already in the midst of it. But if you've never had the test done, right? When a person, they, you want, to, you want you'd like to be tested and you'd like to find out all those things out until we get you to the report, which is a second visit, right? We charge people $75, $75 to do that. This lady there, she's like, I'm not going to say it out loud, but she's like, it's not bad. You're right, it's not bad. It's like a joke. Right? For the information we're going to get out of it. For sure. She's like, I can't believe he hurt me. I mean, I was listening. Okay. That's really good. Right? She says, that's really good. Right? I want to tell you this thing here, and you guys can go after that. Unless you have questions. If you want to go, then you can leave. But...
John came to the office. This was back in October. John is 52 years old. He's got four kids and a wife. And when he came to the office, I already had met him a few months prior to that, right, at a sporting event. Now he comes to the office, and he's got some problems. He's got some numbness and tingling in his, in his hands. Wake up in the middle of the night, right? But just like every other man, they're like, it's no big deal. I just go like this, and it goes away, right? You've seen some of those people? No big deal. Just go like this, and it goes away. I mean, he's minimizing everything, right? So now we're done. So we go over all the intake, we take x-rays of his spine, we do the entire evaluation, and then we schedule him for the doctor's report, right? And at the doctor's report, John, no show. Call him back, try to put him on the schedule. In the meantime, already had scheduled his nutrition evaluation. Already done that. Because when he came in, scheduled for both. Nutrition appointment, no show. We try to call him back, and then he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm going to reschedule the appointment. Then they call him back, right? Try to reschedule the appointment. No show again. And then we get in touch with him and he's like, listen, I'm just, I'm on this, this $10 million project right now. I don't have time for this. This was in October. This was in November. Within 30 days, right? Cancel four appointment, no show. At the end of January this year, just a few months back, the end of January, right? Get a phone call. John was on a ventilator at Spiro Hospital. Just within a few days, passed away. Left behind him four kids, his wife, right? Because he was too busy, right? He was on this big project, was too busy. What I want you to know tonight is don't be, too, don't be too busy for your health. Don't wait. Diseases don't wait. Do you hear me? Diseases don't wait. It didn't have to be this way. Right? 50 years old. It didn't have to be this way. Right? My message for you tonight is don't wait. Diseases don't wait. It just keeps moving, right? There's no such thing as like, I'm just going to stay still. It's either you're getting worse every day or you're doing something for your health and you're getting better. Fair enough? Right, so thank you for being here tonight. Um, I did not tell you, if you're looking at this young lady back there, her name is Jessica. She's going to raise her hand, right? If you're ready to have your evaluation done or signing up for your evaluation, she's going to be the one who's going to do that. What's going to happen now is I'll answer some questions. If you're tired because you're like, I got to go. I've been sitting here for a little bit and I'm out of here. Just go on the outside there and just like, we'll see you later. We have another, well, we have classes here every month. So you guys are welcome.